Kim Kardashian's dress with the label on, Victoria Beckham on crutches, Saint Laurent's see-through tops. We've seen a good mix of glamour and reality at Paris Fashion Week. Welcome to our look at the highlights with fashion journalist Louis Pisano. Louis, hello. Hi, Eve. Thank you for having me again. Nice to have you here. Now, nine days, more than 100 fashion events and 70 runway shows. Has it been a good one for you? It's been amazing. We've seen a lot of, um, we've seen a lot, I'll say that for now, but it's been a really great week. Paris Fashion Week, it's always the, the best time of year to be in Paris. Okay, well, it is a fun time to be out and about on the Paris streets. They're filled with statement outfits. Before we dive into the fashion shows, Catherine Kadir Clifford has more on the economic benefits of Paris Fashion Week. It's one of the most popular events in the City of Lights. Paris Fashion Week sees the streets of the capital and its most prestigious venues filled with the boldest of outfits. With them, the fashionistas bring considerable economic benefits. Each edition draws in some 20,000 visitors to its shows, representing more than 10 billion euros in sales for creators, according to the French Fashion Institute. As for the capital, economic benefits are estimated at 1.2 billion with hotels, restaurants and taxis reaping in the profits from these stylish crowds of visitors. The fashion sector represents no less than 2.5% of France's GDP. But despite its economic advantages, Fashion Week is under pressure to change its model when it comes to sustainability. While individual designers are making gestures such as using recycled materials, the carbon footprint of a single edition is estimated at 11,250 tonnes of carbon dioxide. That's the equivalent of over 6,300 return trips between Paris and New York. Well, Louis, let's dive into the fashion shows now. And a show everyone is talking about, Alexander McQueen. It was Sean McGeer's debut show as creative director. How was it? Well, it was quite polarizing. Um, very mixed reviews on either side. And I think that was in part due to how Sean really interpreted many of the house's codes, but he also took it back to that early feel of Alexander McQueen, very raw, very rebellious and very punk, which, you know, coming right after Sarah Burden's tenure, which was very elegant and very polished, was quite disconcerting for a lot of people. OK, well, next to a brand that's playing its part in the Free the Nipple campaign, the movement that celebrates a woman's right to bear her breasts, The Saint Laurent Show. Take a look. So, Louis, lots of talk about the see-through tops in this one. Was it a sheer delight? Well, it quite was quite titillating, <laughs> to say the least. Um, Anthony Vaccarello at Saint Laurent, the Saint Laurent woman under him, is always super, super fierce, very feminine, very sexy, very liberated. So this, again, was another example of that. And the celebrity count at the Saint Laurent show was high, with Kate Moss, Charlotte Rampling, Rossi De Palma and Georgia May Jagger in the front row. Olivia Wilde rocked um, Saint Laurent's sheer top. Yves Saint Laurent was playing his part in the Free the Nipple campaign, of course, long since the 60s. And these transparent looks are actually the focus of an exhibition that's called Sheer at the Yves Saint Laurent Museum in Paris on until August. Here's a glimpse of it. It 
we go, an exhibition on in Paris. Let's go to the Dior show now, and a host of A-listers were there. Actresses Jennifer Lawrence, Natalie Portman, and Game of Thrones star Maisie Williams, who actually is appearing in the fashion TV series The New Look, where she plays Christian Dior's sister. There was also Elizabeth Debicki, who plays Princess Diana in the series The Crown. And actress Loretto Peralta told us why she loves the brand. Dior does is it, it makes women feel powerful, it makes women feel comfortable in themselves and, you know, provides the right dresses and the right garments to take over the world. I think women right now have the freedom, you know, to, to really explore their creativity, explore art, explore love and find, find power in, in what is to be a woman, you know. A lot of excitement in the back of that clip, lots of female screaming. Now, um, Kim Kardashian caused a stir, didn't she? Yes. She at the <laughs> Balenciaga show for wearing a dress by the brand with the label still on. Was that on purpose, though? Yes, it was definitely intentional. Demna likes to take uh, ordinary objects, the mundane, and turn them into fashion. You know, a bag of chips becomes a clutch and so on and so on. So yes, definitely the tag was probably in leather and definitely part of the dress. OK, well, we also um, saw the Beckhams in town for Victoria's fashion show. She was on crutches as she hurt her ankle in the gym. Uh, the show was actually stormed by Peter Animal Right activists. Louis, does that sort of thing ruin a show or just get more headlines for it? A bit of both, because, you know, when, uh, when the protesters storm the runway, it takes you out of that world that the designer has so carefully created for you. But at the same time, for both PETA and the brand, it does, it does capture headlines, whether, you know, there's been talk of whether sometimes brands, you know, intentionally have protesters crash in order to get headlines. But it definitely does a bit of both. OK, well, there's a lot of real life in that show, for sure. Next to the Schiaparelli show, um, can we just talk about the neckties that were made out of hair that I personally found a bit gross. <laughs> they're, they're quite, they're quite at Schiaparelli, uh, always incorporating bits of surrealism. And it was a bit of a nod to Elsa Schiaparelli. She used to wear a bracelet made out of hair. OK, all right. Well, that's interesting. I didn't realise that. But so that's why we've got you here to like fill me in on the details. Um, next to the show from the subversive brand Vetement, it was full of celebs, music stars Cher, Tiger and J Balvin. Let's take a look at it. So that show, Louis, marks the label's 10th anniversary, um, but the co-founder, Guram Vasalia, also used it to take swipes at his brother, um, Demna, who's the creative director of Balenciaga, didn't he? Yes, he did. So right now, Guram and Demna are in a massive feud. Last season, Demna had their mother, Ella, walk the Balenciaga show, and Guram came on to Instagram to say that he wished he could have seen it, but his brother didn't invite him. So this season, he put Anwar Hadid, who is the little brother of Gigi and Bella, in a shirt that said, not mom's favorite. <laughs> I think we know what that's alluding to. OK, it was also, um, I love all this gossip behind the scenes. It was also the debut of South African brand uh, Makosa. It's the only African-based brand on the official schedule this year at Paris Fashion Week. The founder, Ladumo um, Nicolo, wants to challenge the Western perception of African fashion and show how traditional styles can be modernized for a new generation. Tell us more about it. Well, um, you know, when I was reading up on it, he said that he didn't want it to be just a presentation or just a fashion show. He really wanted to connect to the diaspora here in Paris and show, you know, the best of African fashion, especially when you look at the, the traditional fabrics he used, traditional uh, Koza fabrics with the beading and the braid work. Um, for him, it's not about just wearing your traditions on uh, Heritage Day or an Independence Day or Black History Month. He wants to show that you can wear your heritage all year round. OK, well, it certainly looks like an absolutely delicious collection. Well, becoming more and more international, Chinese designers from the burgeoning fashion capital of Shenzhen were showcased in Paris. The latest collections from brands LSA, Inga and Corridor were presented. Take a look. So overall, I think there were more than 70 fashion shows. What are we actually going to be wearing, in your opinion, um, next fall, winter? 
I definitely think Boho is about to make a massive comeback, as we saw at the um, Shamina Kamali's debut at Chloe. Maximalism, big coats. Um, you know, we're going to be very, very, very extra. Extra. Next fall. Extra. Next more fall. is more. Okay, well, speaking about extra, just before we go, a word about um, American style icon um, Iris Apfel, who passed away during Fashion Week. She was 102. Tell us a bit about her. She lived quite a colorful life, the uh, matriarch of maximalism, you know. Um, she learned her love of fashion from, um, you know, watching her mother work in the store and from an early age going around New York to the thrift shops and the flea markets. And that's where she really um, found her love of maximalism and combining all sorts of crazy textures and prints and, you know, the signature Iris Apfel that we know now. So it really is a big loss for the fashion world that such an icon is gone. Yeah, I love her extravagance. Well, we're going to leave you with a glimpse at Iris from an Albert Maisel's 2014 documentary about her. And thank you so much, Louis Fasano, for coming and speaking to us. It's been a pleasure as always. We'll see you next time. I didn't give a damn about going to the party or being at the party. It was getting dressed for the party. And there's truth and poetry in that. You can learn good taste, but you can't learn style. I think they're two different things. I think style is in your DNA, and once you have it, you have to work at it. But good taste can be, can be taught. So Rara Bird herself, over 75 years of influence in fashion, interior design, the icon, Iris Apfel. That's so nice to hear. Makes a girl feel like there's still a chance.